is one of the possibilities with work we are doing looking at how the human voice works. We can put a speaker in a magnetic resonance imaging machine and we can measure the shape of the tube from the larynx in the neck to the lips for different sounds. A virtual version of that in a computer that we can move and put a larynx sound into ultimately will be able to speak and it should sound like the person to whom that tube belongs. So, put the future to one side for a moment, and let me show you the result of my going into an MRI machine and measuring my own vowels. This very curious object, which those at the back will struggle to see, this white thing has my lips at this end, and my larynx would be exactly at the bottom, and the curve is the curve of my own mouth. And what you're looking at is David Howell's, Howard's R vowel. <laughs> now, some of you won't know, but I teach and work in the music technology area, something that York pioneered around 38 years ago and invented the term music technology. When colleagues, I wasn't here then, colleagues in electronics and music got together and said, young people who are interested in science and young people who are interested in music need to know about the other's subject. And the University of York built the first electronic music studio in the UK. Something I am very proud of because in the electronic engineering department now, over half of our undergraduates are studying music technology degrees. But I'm an organist, megalomania, and it occurred to me that this looks a bit like a pipe. What would it be like if we set up a pipe organ that consisted of these? Well, <laughs> this is the prototype. There are five of them. The bizarre thing is these are all me. That's even more peculiar. And Ah, uh, uh, okay, these are me. So I now have the opportunity with five of them and a synthesizer that's running on this computer to play five-part music. So let me give you a little sample of what I am calling the vocal tract organ.
That was O Mio Babino Caro by Puccini, sung by a lecturer in the Department of Electronics, <laughs> Dr. Helena Daffin. <laughs>